Hello, I'm Dr. Katie Termini. I'm from New York City, and I am a forensic psychologist with a specialty in neuropsychology. My role specifically is doing assessments on defendants, mostly for criminal court. Um, so I would be hired by an attorney or by the court directly or by the government to assess someone who has committed some sort of felony crime. Uh, and usually the person has a history of either severe mental illness or some sort of neurological impairment because I specialize in the neuropsychological end of things. Mental health professionals interplay with uh, the red flag laws in a few different ways. One being in most states, we are people who can petition the court. So if we have a patient or someone that we come into contact with who we feel like is a risk, we can petition the court to have them um, unable to carry or own a firearm. Additionally, those individuals who have red flag laws put into place are allowed to appeal that decision if they feel like it was unjust. In that case, generally, they will undergo a psych evaluation. My job in these cases is to essentially do a very thorough threat assessment, um, which is something that most forensic psychologists are trained to do. It's what the court asks us to do in a lot of the cases that we do. However, threat of uh, being sort of a school shooter is a specific category. And these are individuals who often carry specific traits. It carries a large responsibility for myself or whoever the evaluator is in determining the rights uh, to the extent of this person going forward. So we're looking at a lot of different factors in doing an assessment like this. Um, you're looking obviously at past history, past violence is uh, essentially the biggest predictor of future violence. So we're looking at things like that in someone's past. We're looking at signs of specific mental illnesses, trauma, um, ways that they react or interact with others. We're talking to family members, friends, teachers to get a better sense of what this person is like. We're evaluating often their phone records, text messages, social media interactions to see how this person acts when they think maybe no one's looking. And that psych evaluation can result in a few different things. Uh, it can have an impact on how severe the charges are against that person, on what their sentence looks like, if they require psychiatric hospitalization, if they require treatment, recommendations would be included in that report. And that varies greatly depending on the person. Sometimes these are people who um, just need uh, some therapy, maybe some family counseling because there's some things going on in the home um, and they need a little bit more of a stable environment and need to learn uh, better coping strategies to manage their emotions and not lash out. Uh, sometimes that's all it takes. And sometimes um, the recommendations are much more in depth and much more uh, serious and stringent. Um, so these recommendations are never um, just put in place across the board, depending on what the person did. It is all based on a very extensive individualized evaluation um, that results in recommendations that are tailor made for that person and then most likely implemented by the government in order to keep that person as well as a community as safe as possible. One pragmatic step uh, we can take to help the situation is to know the laws in your state and to know them in detail. Um, for instance, something like the red flag laws, it exists in 19 states, so you should know if it exists in your state or not, and you should know the intricacies of it. Better conversations about red flag laws and gun violence. Um, in my opinion, these are things that should be talked about in schools. Um, often someone's peers and the other students in their class are the ones that are aware of what's going on. They see the person's social media posts, they talk to them in the cafeteria, they see the anger, um, they see, they hear threats that this person might be making. Um, so those are the people who are often most aware of the risks of an individual, but they don't know what to do. Um, and so discussing the options in school, how to file a petition, when is it appropriate, who to talk to, these are things that school counselors should be talking to students about um, because those are the people who are most likely to pick up on those individuals who are at risk. This is not a problem that's gonna be solved overnight. Um, there is no easy solution, especially in a country that is so, so politically divided, but it's at least being talked about. People are trying to pass better legislation. People are more aware of the risks. 
Um, parents are talking to their children about it. Parents are aware of maybe of when their child might be struggling and when their child might actually be at risk of doing one of these things. So it's bringing it into people's awareness and creating um, a topic of discussion. Uh, there are no easy um, ways 